again but this time it's gonna be on the main build of rpcs3 not the illusion build if you are new to my channel in case if you do not know i've already made a video on how to play metal gear solid 4 on the illusion build of rpcs3 but fear not uh, my dear viewer uh, what you're watching right now is Metal Gear Solid 4 running at 4K 60fps on the main build of RPCS3. So uh, do continue to watch this video uh, to find out how you can get this game running on your hardware. For example, my current hardware uh, for your knowledge is an AMD Ryzen 7 5700G. Uh, it is overclocked to 4.6GHz. And I use an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. It is the MSI Ventus 2X OC version. So um, hopefully this does give you uh, a reference of uh, what you can expect if you have to play this game without any issues. Now do keep in mind crashes may or may not happen. It does not matter how high end your hardware is or how low end your hardware is. Uh, from what I've seen uh, through my extensive research the past couple of months any hardware that you basically try to play metal gear solid 4 on rpcs3 on you will be able to play the game uh, definitely but do expect some issues to pop up uh, you might have audio issues you might have frame drop issues uh, also another thing i want to mention is you might have controller problems uh, as well so not to worry, I'll be explaining everything in this video. Alright, so let's move on to the main topic. Alright, so if you already watched the video where I show you how to play Metal Gear Solid 4 on the Illusion build of RPCS3, then this is what you need to do. Um, if you want to play the game on the main build right now, uh, I would suggest you make separate folders and have separate builds on them. Like for example here, I have the main RPCS3. If you open it, you can see that I have all the files and folders that are required for the main build of RPCS3 right here. And if you go back, you can see that I also have the illusion build with me. All right. Now I'm pretty sure you have no idea what to do now. Now you want to play the game on the main build of RPCS3. Uh, you don't have to make a new copy of the game. Uh, copy uh, uh, drag and drop none of that all right you don't have to do any of that so all you have to do is open the main build uh, make sure you have it set up like i have uh, you can uh, go to the website all right so i'll be showing you how to download the main build of rpcs3 you don't have to click on any google drive links like in the uh, previous video so all you have to do is just follow this guide and uh, you'll have the game up and running all right but before you do that make sure you do this so open up um, the main rpcs3 build all right um, open up the RPCS3 app and pretty sure you're going to be seeing a um, list of games here all right so you must have already done this so what you can do is if you have so what you can do is I've just finished updating the the app so what you can do is uh, you can click on file and you can click on add games if you click on add games it will show you um, the directories all right, so uh, you can go back to your main RPCS3 root folder just like I have set up over here. So uh, this uh, J drive is my 500 GB uh, SATA SSD. All right, um, I use it just to store any uh, additional games that I have on my PC. Uh, and I also mainly use it for emulated games. Um, so what you can do here is you can have separate builds of RPCS3. You can have the Illusion build, you can have another... Uh, I don't know which exactly this one is so uh, anyway forget about that uh, so what you can do is if you have the game files in the illusion build or another build just go to that specific directory all right uh, go over there and go down to games pretty sure you must have copied and pasted it all right and then you just have to select the folder that's it so select the folder and if you press on this button the game should pop up here all right and uh, you can continue watching the video and carry on the steps from here on out so thank you so much all right so make sure you follow these steps if you have any questions if you're not sure what to do make sure to comment down below and i'll help you out all right don't worry about that okay so now here we begin the main part of the video and this is for all the new people that are clicking on this video for the first time so let's go all 
all right so the first thing you want to do is you can open up your browser doesn't matter which browser you use just go to the search bar and type rpcs3 all right um, click on enter and then you'll see the first result at the top uh, if you're using google search like uh, most of the planet you should see this so the official link is https hyphen double slash double backward slash rpcs3.net all right so this is the official link make sure you don't click on any other link that you see here you might get a virus or something like that um, so left click on this uh, topmost link up here and this is the official site of rpcs3 all right um, so after this what you should do is click on the download button here at the top click on that and then you can go down and based on whichever OS you're using. If you have a Mac, you can get the Mac version. If you're using a Linux, you can use the Linux version. If you're using, of course, like most of the people uh, here, most of the people on planet Earth, you can use Windows. All right. So um, you can click on download. And after you click on download, you should uh, download the build. All right. So let's download it. I'm using a different kind of a downloading program here. But if you're using uh, just uh, your basic browser, it'll, it'll make it into a zip file all right so let's wait for the download to finish all right so depending on how fast your isp is the download should not take a lot of time if it is quite slow then it could take uh, maybe uh, a long time so be patient after the download is complete make sure to open up the uh, zip archive now here i'm using uh winrar all right so here are all the folders and files that are from the main build of rpcs3 so what you can do is you can select all of them all right even if you're using the windows default unarchiver you can use that too so select everything all right uh, let's minimize this and um so make sure you have a uh, folder in your ssd now you can use a hard disk but i would recommend using an ssd for uh, quicker load times while you're playing games on your emulator. So I am using my 500 GB uh, SATA SSD right here an M.2 SATA SSD and as you can see I already have a couple of builds here. So what you can do is you can create a new folder All right, and you can name it main rpcs3 or something like that. I'm just gonna name it rpcs3 for the purpose of this video um, and then you can open up your unarchiver and after you've selected all the files and folders just left click drag and then drop it should copy everything here oh never mind okay so don't do that just uh, make sure you drag it into this folder but it's not a big deal all right after you've copied all the files and folders into your rpcs3 now we begin the configuration process all right so uh, if you have the game now let me tell you this all right so if you're opening rpcs3 for the first time you'll be greeted with this small window here so make sure you select uh, create desktop shortcut, create start menu shortcut, uh, stuff like that. Um, so you got to check on this box here. I have read the quick start guide and do not show again. Make sure you click on these two boxes. If you want your shortcuts, you can click on those. But I already have the program. So there's no need for me to do it. All right. So then we will click on continue. And as uh, this is a very important step. Now I'll be explaining this. All right. Look at this red uh, warning here it says rpcs3 does not condone piracy you must dump your own games so i'll get to that part so this is a brand new install of rpcs3 now uh, a full disclaimer here i'm not going to be showing you how to get a copy of the game in order to play it on your version or on your install of rpcs3 so do please keep that in mind. If I see any comments, if anybody's going to ask me where you can get the game ISO, the game package files, the game files, game save files, anything of that sort, I'm just going to ignore those comments. All right. So don't take it the wrong way because this is a YouTube video. This is supposed to be an educational video. Um, I, uh, I do not condone piracy. I do not promote piracy. I don't like it. All right. Um, so you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. There's the internet. There's Google. Just go check it out on your own um, I don't want to get in trouble. I've spent over a year trying to build up my channel from nothing So if uh, YouTube finds out that I'm promoting piracy or anything like that, I'm gonna get a community guideline strike uh, Worst case scenario. I could have my channel terminated by YouTube. So I do not want to do that uh, This is my part-time job. So please understand um, No offense to anybody uh, I'm really sorry 
if you have clicked on this video and you watched all this way thinking that you're going to get the copy of the game uh, in this video no you're not you're going to have to find it on your own all right um so thank you for understanding anyway so let's move on to uh, the next part of this uh, video so if you already have the game files like me what you're gonna have to do is click on file all right and then select add games over here after you select add games go into wherever your game files are located all right so i'll show you what it looks like go into uh the directory where your game files are located it's usually inside a folder go there and if you open up the folder i already have the folder here all right as you can see this is the us version of the game and it's uh, almost uh, 30 gigs all right so if you click on it you'll see two folders ps3 underscore game and ps3 underscore update so this is usually how the actual um, folder of the game will look like inside you'll have two folders like these and this is the actual size i'm using the us version of the game i think that is blus 30109 that is the uh, serial number for the us version of the game um this video i'm making mostly with the us version of the game in mind i would suggest try not to get the european version the U european copy it starts with bles or something like that i'm pretty sure uh, that's how it begins so if you're gonna get that copy you're gonna have a lot of issues uh in the previous illusion build video that i have made i've had a, a viewer comment that uh, their controller their xbox 360 controller was not working on the european copy so i had to convince them to get a um, the US version which took them like a couple of days to acquire and after they have gotten it and after they have uh, also installed the illusion build which they did not previously they were using the main build the controller started to work so uh, you might have controller issues you might have small issues here and there if you're using the European copy I would suggest don't get the European copy there are some problems in it I would suggest you get the US copy all right so the US copy is BLUS30109 that is the serial number so that is uh, the exact serial number I, I have over here so once you have selected uh, metal gear solid 4 you have the game folder already just select on select folder and the game will be here and as you can see the serial number is shown as what i have said here b l u s 30109 okay so you can create a uh, shortcut if you want but i don't have to do that okay so um the next step what you're gonna have to do once you have added the game to your rpcs3 game list what you're gonna do, have to do is you're gonna have to update the game all right so here is another app i'll show it to you right now so just like before what you're gonna have to do is open up your browser and type rusty psn in your search engine and look at the first link uh, this is the link if you want to get the update files for your copy of the game this is what you're gonna have to do so if you look at the first link here it says rainbow cookie 32 slash rusty dash psn so this is the official link click on it all right and after you've clicked on it go here towards the right side of the screen you can see releases click on the latest link here that has the green icon on it so click on it scroll down and you will see rusty psn egui and cli so you only have the linux and windows versions you don't have the mac version all right um so you're gonna have to figure a way for that if you're using a uh, macintosh but anyway uh, rusty psn egui windows if you're using windows and you want the gui version click on this one it's another zip file begin the download and after the download has completed open up the archive and you can see there's only one exe file here all right so what you're gonna have to do is you can drag it to your main directory of rpch3 like so and uh, i'm gonna delete this one all right but anyway uh, i'll delete it later so rusty psn double click on it it's not a virus don't worry it will open up a gui uh, window over here and what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to type in the serial number but, but before you do that click on the settings icon here and change your download path to something more accessible all right so for me i have a new folder in documents okay so uh whenever you download uh, update files it will go to this directory here so keep that in mind all right so whatever directory you choose here is what you're gonna get so as you can see in downloads i already have multiple game update files multiple serial numbers so these are uh, all the other games i play on my emulator 
and uh, you can see that I have a BLUS301109. So what you're going to have to do is select whatever directory you want to save the update files in. All right, save settings and then type in the serial number. So BLUS301109, that is the serial number for the US copy of Metal Gear Solid 4. Click on search for updates. You'll get the uh, update files and um, it'll show up here and click on download all. So when you click on it and once it's done downloading, it will show you a notification down here at the bottom. BLUS301109 version 2.0 downloaded successfully. All right. So once it's done, go to the directory. Right now I'm here in my directory. All right. Go there and click on the serial number, the serial number folder that is located there. And here is the actual patch file. All right. So what you're going to have to do is go back to the RPCS3 program. Click on file at the top and then select install packages slash wraps slash edats. So if you click on this, you should go to wherever your update file is located. Here I am. Uh, so open up the um, serial number and then here's the update file. It's a PKG file package file. Double click on it and it'll ask you, do you want to install this package? All right, so verify the uh, name here and then click on yes. It'll update the game file to version 2.0 and after it's done, this is where we will move on to the next step. Alright, so here is my RPCS3 up and running. And you can see that I'm using the master build, which is the main build of RPCS3. This is not the illusion build or any other custom build that is designed to run Metal Gear Solid 4. So I'm, as you can see, I also have other games that I usually play on a daily basis whenever I can. And uh, you can see the serial number here. This is the US version. In the middle, it says US. And that indicates that I'm using the US version. Now, if you have the European version, it would look something like uh, BLES or something like that. And I do have version 2.0. If you right click on this and you go to manage game patches. All right, so we are here and we are looking at the patch manager menu on the main RPCS3 build. And as you can see here, I already have Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, already showing up here. So you have three sub menus, all versions, version one and version two. All right, so version one, is pretty useless if you have version 2 already uh, updated on your game file all right so don't even bother clicking on that but what you need to focus on are versions all of them and then version 2.0 so select on all versions and depending on the ps3 firmware that you have installed in your rpcs3 build ensure that you have the correct cell spurs urgent commands hack enabled you need this so that you can reduce the frequency of crashes while playing if you haven't played this game before and in case we do not know if you do play this game without these uh fixes enabled you're gonna crash every couple of uh, eight to ten minutes while playing the game so if you want to have a crash free experience uh, do turn on this uh setting corresponding to your current ps3 firmware version that you have in uh, RPCS3, that is the main build. If you have version 4.87, select that. If you have version 4.88, select that. If you have 4.90, select that. That's how it works. Don't select version 4.87 while having 4.90. It's not gonna work, all right. Keep that in mind. Okay, moving on to the next. While that is enabled, we'll click on version two over here on the sub menu. And you can see that there are multiple options here. Now the main ones that you definitely need to turn on are crash fix, flickering textures fix, unlock FPS. These will increase the performance of the game while you're playing it. These three are very crucial, so do not uh, ignore these. As for the others, this one, these uh, four, uh, aspect ratio, they are uh, based for ultra wide uh, monitor configurations. I don't have an ultra wide monitor, so I can't really speak much on that. So if you have an ultra wide monitor, do try them out. Let me know in the comments if it works for you. And um, as for the other settings over here, disable HUD, shadows, snow effect, spawn effects. Uh, these are mostly based on personal preference. Me, I don't really 
have to turn off any of these i need all of them so yeah there you go infinite ammo and all this um once again like infinite ammo max camo no reload these are mostly cheats so you know it's up to you reduce stage quality and remove fog these are once again optimization uh fixes now another thing what you can do is you can left click on each of these and you can see the notes down here at the lower right box do you see that so over here it will give you um a description of what will happen if you turn on uh, the fix that is uh, highlighted over here so do keep an eye out read each and every uh, notes for each and every fix over here that way you'll have an idea all right but definitely definitely you're gonna have to turn on these three because these will definitely help you play the game peacefully without any problems okay so the patches are the main thing that i want to cover first beforehand all right so once you've done with all the patches just uh close all the menus here but don't worry even if you close them they will still be highlighted i'm using a dark skin of rpcs3 so if they are checked for me it will appear in white if you're using a different skin you might have a different color uh, so keep that in mind so if you're using version 2.0 which is what i would highly recommend that you use if you're using version 2.0 make sure you have these three options selected so yeah after selecting all these options that you require that you need you feel uh, are good for you then what you can do is go down here to the lower right corner click on apply and then save and that's that okay now the next thing the most important thing that i would like to come to is configuring the emulator to run the game all right so if you have watched my previous video that i put out way back in uh, august or september i'm not really sure because that video was months ago uh, that video will be in the description down below and uh, you will see a card up top up here so if you haven't seen that video already uh, do check it out but it is a long video it is about 30 minutes long um, so if you can spare the time do watch it but uh, if you don't want to play the game on a custom build of rpcs3 then don't bother clicking on it all right so um over here what i can tell you is uh, in order to make sure that this game runs properly on your current configuration uh, you're gonna have to set everything to default all right so how you can do it is go and right click on the game here all right and then select boot with global configuration this is the best option that has worked for me and now you can try to click on change custom configuration but i would tell you not to do that all right because if you click on change custom configuration what's going to happen is it's going to give you a custom window all right based for the specific profile of the game that you have and you're going to have to go through all these tabs and manually adjust everything all right so you know it's not going to work because uh what i've seen is if you open the game with the custom configuration now if you have selected all the settings based on a random guide that you must have picked up on the internet hell even my video for example uh if you select uh, all the settings gpu cpu audio io all right and then system network advanced emulator if you select all the necessary options that you have to up here and you click on apply and then save custom config what's gonna happen is once you boot into the game with boot with custom configuration if you select this option what's gonna happen is and i'll show you on the screen here for some reason on i don't know if it's happening uh, due to my own specific hardware uh, you can't see any character models i am not sure why this is happening i've uh, been trying this for the past couple of months it's quite frustrating honestly um i don't know it could be a different uh, case scenario in your situation all right um so that's something that you need to notice if you're trying to use a custom configuration uh, to boot up the game uh, there's going to be a high chance that the game will boot up fine but you will not see any textures you will not see any character models they'll be invisible it's it's like uh, looking at hollow man you're not going to be looking at snake you won't even know what the hell snake is going to look like if you're starting the game for the first time and that's going to bother you so don't even bother doing that instead what i would suggest is go up here to configuration uh click on any one of these tabs all right now click on cpu it's going to open up the whole settings uh window up here and then what i would do the best thing what i can recommend to you to do is click on restore defaults just click on that all right 
after you click on restore defaults go to GPU tab here and you can see the default resolution is 720p now I have a 1440p monitor but I'm still gonna increase it up to 4k which is 3840 by 2160 all right and you can see a lot of the uh, settings that you're usually supposed to have checked are not checked here everything is left unchecked uh, certain settings are odd over here uh, you must have seen guides all over the internet maybe on reddit maybe on other youtube videos uh, maybe even on my previous uh, metal gear solid 4 guide video and uh, you know the configuration that i have over here do not match any of those but do bear with me all right so uh, in the global settings menu here which is what we're looking at we're not looking at a custom configuration menu here just take one good look at all the settings all right after pressing restore defaults that is and see what exactly is happening all right so what i would do is uh, is just slowly go through each and every menu see if everything checks out don't change anything the only thing what i would suggest to you to change is only go to the gpu tab and then change the resolution as per your current monitor setup depending on your own taste choose your resolution you might have a big monitor you might be playing on a television probably you might be uh, you might be playing on a small 21 inch monitor and you might prefer playing at 720p despite having a 1080p monitor you might prefer playing at 1440p despite having a 4k monitor so whatever the case your taste may be your preference may be do select your preferred resolution down here and then that's the only thing you need to change everything else cpu audio system io blah 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 all that can stay the same don't change anything after that you click on apply and then save all right so don't forget go to configuration click on any one of these uh, options here and then click on restore defaults apply and save but before you do that see once again even i also almost made the mistake see it has gone back to 720p so upscale it to your preferred resolution now i prefer playing this at 4k I'm recording the video right now in 4K. Hopefully, I do manage to upload this on YouTube in 4K. So, I can show you how it looks, the game looks. All right. Okay. So, make sure that's what you do. Now, what's going to happen is, if you have other games, like for example, I have the MGS HD collection and I also have God of War. Um, do make sure you have custom configurations for these games because if you do try playing the other games... Uh, maybe the global settings might not work but then again I'm pretty sure if you have already uh, set up RPCS3 before you must already have had set up custom configurations for each of these uh, other games that you you might play on your uh, computer so just something to know all right so the next very important thing that i want to talk about which is an issue that i've been facing uh actually it's not an issue that i've been facing an issue that one of my viewers have been facing uh in their uh, computer when they have been trying to set up rpcs3 to play metal gear solid 4 was the path section now you do need a controller all right let me tell you this clearly you definitely need a controller to play metal gear solid 4 because as you know, Metal Gear Solid 4 is a PlayStation 3 game. So PlayStation 3 is a console and you know, the best optimized controller that you can play Metal Gear Solid 4 on RPCS3 uh, would be the DualShock 3. But right now, it's really hard to get your hands on DualShock 3s uh, all over the world. Sure, you can buy them on eBay or some other random site, but what's the point? You're going to have to connect it via... A USB you're gonna have to download a special kind of software and then you're gonna have to install all sorts of weird drivers and that's a big pain and a headache in the ass so what I would suggest to you is if you have a controller lying around pick it up make sure it works if it's uh, an Xbox 360 controller if it's an Xbox Series X controller if it's a DualShock 4 and above uh, you can connect it using your USB cable but if you're gonna connect your controller to your computer make sure you plug it uh, at the back of your rear I.O. Don't plug it in on the top or in the front of your front I.O. panel. It's not going to be stable uh, based on what I've seen, based on my own experiences. So if you're going to plug in any USB input device, what I would suggest is, especially if it's wired, uh, plug it in in the back. 
towards the back if you're using a computer if you're using a laptop no problem you can plug it in anywhere all right because basically the whole laptop is 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 a whole motherboard all right so if the whole laptop is a whole motherboard you can plug it in in either side and it's still going to give you the same bandwidth whereas on a uh, cabinet on a tower it's different all right if you're going to plug it in the front uh, it's going to go through a little usb3 header that's going to connect to your motherboard and you won't get the full bandwidth performance so you're better off connecting it directly to the motherboard uh, via the rear io so something that you should not all right so here let me open the pads menu and over here you can see that i've currently connected a dual shock 4 which is what i use on pc i also have a dual sense but i haven't tested out the dual sense yet i would rather save it for my ps5 i don't want to have any trouble swapping back and forth uh, from pc to ps5 that's why i have reserved my dual sense 5 for the ps5 alone but i'm happy to have a spare ps4 controller to use so the PS4 controller that I'm using is mainly meant for my computer, for my PC. Whenever I have to play games like Yakuza or Witcher or any game that uh, that has a that works well with controller, if I have to play any of those games on PC, I connect my PS4 controller directly to the PC, and that is via Bluetooth because I have a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled motherboard, which is the uh, MSI Mag X570S Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. So it has inbuilt Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now I could tell you if you don't have Bluetooth, I could tell you to go out and buy a USB or Bluetooth dongle to connect your controller. But I, I would suggest don't waste money because uh, what I'm trying to do here in this video is to make sure that you guys are able to get this game up and running with whatever you have in hand uh, without having to spend even a single dollar. All right. So that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm aiming for. Um, so I don't want any, I don't want you guys to spend any money on any new controllers or any new devices, nothing like that. All right. So this video is completely free for you to watch, and this video is not meant to get you to spend money on anything. So it's something that you should know. All right. So here is the DualShock 4 controller, and what I would tell you is how you can select your controller is go up to handlers here. Select this drop down menu and you can see multiple options. You have DualShock 3, 4, DualSense. If you're using uh, an Xbox controller, you can either select X input or SDL. All right. So if you do have a DualShock 3 or 4 controller, DualShock 3, most likely you're going to have to get uh, drivers. You're going to have to uh, do all kinds of crazy things in order to get the DualShock 3 working. But I would say DualShock 3 is way too old now, so don't even bother trying to get one of those. Maybe if you don't have an option uh, and you have an, an old DualShock 3 lying around in your storeroom or somewhere uh, in the corner of your house, it's all dusty. Maybe then you can pick it up and then use it. But if you're somebody that actively is using uh, a much more modern controller like the DualShock 4, you're using the DualSense, you're using an Xbox Series uh, XS controller, then I would suggest uh, choosing DualShock 4 or X input or SDL. If you're somebody that's really low on money or you don't have any other option, you don't want to spend any money, you would, or you're comfortable using older controllers, um, or you would rather use a, an old controller lying around in your house, then I would suggest you select DualShock 3. Um, or you can select uh, X input or SDL for your Xbox 360 controller. Uh, wired or wireless, no matter. All right. Um, Unfortunately, I can't tell you how to connect your DualShock 3 controller right now if you do have it. But maybe I think I might make a video because I do actually have a DualShock 3 controller. But <laughs> it is all dusty and dirty. So I'm going to have to pick it up, clean it. And I'm going to have to make sure that it works because it's over <laughs> close to more than 16, 17 years old by this point. So I'm recording this video on the 10th of February, 2024. Uh, so let's see how it goes anyways so here i've connected the dualshock 4 and once you select it your controller should not pop up here all right so if you take a look over here at the anal analog stick uh, dead zones tab down here you can see that i'm moving my left analog stick all right so this will show you if your controller is actually working or not you can even see the battery status the battery percentage uh, you can see all the buttons a layout matching to each other all right and you can also see the d-pad matching up and uh, the left stick and the right stick all that good stuff all right so make sure everything lines up properly 
So you can all you can custom map any of these buttons uh, to your liking as you want. You can click on them and you can change it. But uh, don't do it, all right? Because since you've already selected DualShock 4 or whatever control that you are currently using right now, since you've chosen it, it's gonna auto assign all the buttons as per the controller layout. So don't even do anything. If you want to check the pressure sensitivity in dead zone or the triggers, now for the triggers you can do this. You can hold the left trigger and you can see that they do respond. All right. So, like I said, uh, pressure sensitivity dead zone, I don't know what, what all of this is. I have no idea, but it's maybe something that you might be uh, clear with. So, you know, whatever the case may be, you know what to do. Uh, do spend your time here. All right. So, make sure it's all set up. Now, if you're going to be using an Xbox controller, here's what you can do. All right. So, currently I have connected my Xbox Series XS controller. You can see it here. I'm holding it up here uh, in the video. So this is the control I'm using and this is also connected via Bluetooth to my motherboard on my computer. All right, so, um, but on the screen right now, you can see I'm st it's still showing DualShock 4. No problem, all you have to do is click on the drop down menu and select X input. Now you're gonna see the Xbox controllers layout here. So if you take a good look at the uh, lower right corner the analog stick dead zones for the xbox controller are also working over here all right so um as you can see even the xbox controller works here but i'm using the xbox series xs controller i'm not using an xbox one controller i'm not using uh, an xbox 360 controller so i can't really speak uh, much on those but hopefully they do work for you if not just let me know because i do know uh, one of my viewers uh, they've had a problem with uh, an Xbox 360 controller working for them. And they were connecting it uh, wired. They were not even using wireless. So it could be an issue. So just keep that in mind. As you can see, I'm using the triggers on the Xbox Series X controller here and they are responding. All right. Uh, similarly, you can also try, if X input is something that you is not working for you, you can click on SDL here. And on SDL, it accurately shows up here that the controller that I'm using so it does say Xbox Series X controller 1 all right so even if you select SDL you're gonna see the analog stick dead zones working the same applies even for the trigger thresholds also so you can even see that here all right so uh, like I said if you just select any of the handlers here they should show up automatically you don't even have to change anything here just leave everything as it is if you want to make some custom tweaks here and there you, you know how this um, window works, then by all means go for it. But if you're somebody that's a beginner and you don't really want to waste time tinkering into things, I would just suggest uh, select the handlers. Um, if the handlers for you do not show up, click on refresh. Select whatever handler that you would prefer playing on DualShock 4, which is something I'm going to go back to right now immediately. I'm going to turn off my Xbox controller because I just wanted to show you an example. All right. So I'm going to turn off my Xbox controller and go back to my PS4 controller. Like I was saying, just choose whatever preferred input type that you would want to play this game on and uh, just make sure that everything is in line. And yeah, we are back to my DS4 pad. Now it did not show up even after my controller was connected via Bluetooth. So you're gonna have to click on refresh and you will see it will show DS4 pad. If not, it will show in brackets disconnected. So if that's the case, make sure you click on refresh. So like I was saying, guys, uh, just select your handler, whatever controller that you have. Just select it down here in this list. Um, don't even try to play this game on mouse and keyboard. It's not going to be worth it. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But then again, it's just a lot more of your time being wasted. So... All I care about is that you don't waste too much time. You get into playing the game immediately. All right. Okay. So there we go. And that's that. So choose your input type, whatever you want as your handler. And then you make sure that your analog sticks are working. Make sure your trigger buttons are working out here. And if you want to change any of the buttons of the controllers, you want to change the layout. You want to change a couple of uh, controls here and there. Do feel free to do so. But... You know, that's not something that I know, so I can't really speak much about it. And yeah, once you're done setting up the pad for the game, 
make sure that you click on save. And that's that for pads. Alright guys, the time is here, so all you have to do right now is start the game. And this is how you do it. Now, don't forget, uh, watch this closely and do exactly as I'm showing you in this video. Right click on the game and select boot with global configuration. Do not select anything else, alright. And after you select it, uh, it will compile the shaders, compile the modules. It could take time depending on uh, if you're starting the game for the first time or if you've already had the game with you. Alright, so I'm just going to change it into full screen mode by pressing Alt plus Enter at the same time. Just so I can show you that the game does indeed run. And I do have the uh, notification at the lower left corner showing that it's compiling PPU modules. And I'm using my DualShock 4 controller as usual. Like how I would prefer it. It will take some time. I'm gonna skip the uh, one of the uh, screens here because uh, it is copyrighted. And we're just gonna head into the menu. And uh, you can see that the menu does work for me. The game does load into the menu. Let's press start. And I'll load one of my save files here. The game is running in 4K right now. But the video you're watching is at 1440p on YouTube. So don't get confused. Alright. So I'm going to open the uh, starting of the game where usually if you do boot up this game on the official RPCS3 build. Uh, if you boot up using custom configuration, you will see that uh, the game would have missing character models and textures. But since we have chosen to boot using the global configuration. This is what you should be seeing. Hopefully this does work for you. If not, let me know down in the comments and I'll see how I can help you. This is the starting of the game. So as you can see guys, everything has loaded up because we have chosen boot with global configuration. We did not select uh, boot with custom configuration. Now this part might crash for you if you're loading for the first time or maybe even if you've already compiled everything the game can still crash here so if that does happen make sure to restart the game all right but if you're gonna boot the game please do not forget select uh, boot with global configuration so as you can see the game is running fine all right this is captured on my pc right here everything will load up properly now if you don't want to see any spoilers um i'm just gonna pause the game right here all right so um I'm gonna end the video right here guys so I want to thank you all so much for watching this whole video uh, do try out the steps that I have mentioned in this video hopefully uh, everything does work out for you if you're having any issues uh, do let me know down in the comments I'll try my best to respond to them um, if you're somebody that has watched the previous uh, video that I made based uh, on the illusion build of RPCS3 uh, how you can get Metal Gear Solid 4 running on that build uh, you know, uh, I do try to respond to every comment, but sometimes uh, comments don't make sense, alright? Uh, sometimes people just comment uh, silly things and, you know, uh, they don't make sense. Sometimes people are not being honest with their comments. Sometimes people are too lazy to try out uh, a solution that I would have offered them in the comments already if the game did not work for them or if they've had any, uh, if they've had any other issues related. To running the game on um, the illusion build of RPCS3 uh, hopefully this video right now uh, where I'm showing you how you can run the game on the official build of RPCS3 hopefully this does work for you once and for all if you've had issues in the past with the previous video uh, of the illusion build um, but I do try to get back to all the comments all right this is not a clickbait video Neither was the previous video a clickbait video. I uploaded that video months ago and initially that video hardly got any views. But uh, uh, after I think November or December was when the video started to blow up. And that video took me a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of days to make. Even this video has taken me a, a couple of weeks to make. So I don't put out anything for clickbait. My channel is not one of those channels where 
you have a, a notepad on the screen and somebody just types uh, something on in the notepad uh, showing you uh, steps on how to do something i actually have a face i am a part-time content creator all right i'm not a faceless youtuber like most people out there so whether you like to believe it or not i'm somebody that you can trust all right so it's up to you whether you choose to uh, listen to what i have to say in the video or listen to the video it's up to you whether you want to like or subscribe or dislike i don't care all that matters to me all i care about is are you able to get this game running are you able to have fun and play this game for the first time and experience it the way you were meant to experience it for the first time that's all i care about all right i don't care about anything else so hopefully this video did help you and if you've liked the video uh, please don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel turn on bell notifications for all so you don't miss out on any content any gaming related content i do do live streams every day i do upload videos every day uh, you know i always put out content each and every day all right so i'm i'm a very active youtuber but for some reason uh, the algorithm is uh, gravely punishing my channel uh, i've been around for like a year and uh, two months by this point but uh, you know so far my channel has not seen the growth it deserves so you know i would really appreciate it if you can support me uh, in any way you see fit all right even if it's a like if it's a view you know it's it's all good I, it still does a lot for me all right so so thank you thank you thank you so much um you know hopefully this video has helped you uh, like i keep saying if you have any questions feel free to comment down below but if you're gonna ask uh, for the link of the game or the game files or iso i will not help you uh, if you're gonna ask for any files or anything like that i can't help you because i've already provided all the links in the description all the necessary links uh, all the necessary information in the video and in the description so you can read it you can check it all right just just you know just pay attention <laughs> that's all i can ask you and you know just uh, hopefully you know you understand but yeah thank you guys so much and uh, this is anderson gaming signing out so have a good day take care bye my dear viewer see you in the next video